Things have changed dramatically over the last few hundred years, and because of that, we have some really incredible antiques and collectibles that we get to enjoy and admire. Some of this stuff can really make you miss the olden days, and other pieces can really make you glad that you live in today's modern society. So today, we're gonna be looking at some really incredible antiques and collectibles that have been left behind by the ages, and one of those things that makes me really grateful that we live in today's society is online shopping. One of the things that's changed a lot with online online shopping is how things are shipped, how things are packaged, and how things are delivered. Back in the day, things used to be shipped in really elaborate, really cool reusable boxes. We've been left with some of those really incredible boxes that have become pretty collectible over the last few years, and this one here at this flea market is definitely one of those collectible boxes. And this is from a company called Jack Daniels. Everybody knows Jack Daniels. In 1866, they became the very first United States distillery to make whiskey. Until this very day, they're still the top selling United States whiskey brand. But what's really cool is they have some of the most collectible memorabilia that you're ever gonna be able to find from any kind of whiskey manufacturer. And this box is a really great example. It's got this really cool old school look to it. And Jack Daniels collect Collectors love stuff like this. You can see it's got like all the old hardware here and it's got the rope handles. And they only wanted $10 for this, which is a great price for something like this. There's a lot of really valuable stuff that you can find from Jack Daniels. If you can find some of the old stoneware crocs or jugs, those things can go for well over $1,000. And if you can find some of the old Jack Daniels bottles, those things can go for several hundred dollars. But with a history that spans all the way back to the 1800s, there's all kinds of incredible stuff from this company that you guys can find. Now, another really collectible American brand that had to change the way that they did things because of online shopping was the company called Buck. And you might know Buck because they create some of the most collectible and high quality knives and cutlery that you're ever gonna be able to find. But basically, this company has been around since the early 1900s and it was founded by a man named Hoyt Buck. And he'd created a new way to temper steel on the blade so that it would keep the knife sharper for longer. And it was like a really cool thing that revolutionized the way that people made knives. All of these knives were completely made by hand, but of course, Back when these things were being made, the only way to sell them was at a store. Now, some of you might not know what a store is, but yes, the store was how you used to have to go and get things. So a lot of companies back in the day had their own designated display cases that they would give to the stores to put their items in. Here is actually one of those old buck knife display cases. And you can see it's got the name of the company here on the top. And so then you can see on the inside, it's got this little velvet insert where you could put all of the different knives. And then the back has a door so you could open it, you could pull it out and you could show all of the different knives that you had available. And people really like these old display cases and sometimes people will actually use them to display their collection of knives. A display case like this will go for 100 to $200. I ended up finding this one for 30, so it wasn't a bad price. And it's kind of cool to have an old display case like this. There is one time in history that I'm very confused about. Everything during the Victorian era was like, a little bit elevated, like people were fancy in the Victorian times. They dressed cool. A lot of the stuff that they built still works till this very day. They sort of had a lot of stuff figured out, but also it was just really dramatic. If I could describe it in one word, it would be fussy. It was fussy. Like getting dressed in the morning, like I feel like it probably took women four hours to get ready every single morning. If you look at some of the stuff that was made in the 18, early 1900s, they are all very fussy and pretty intense. This guy has a bunch of stuff from the Victorian era, and I'm like, let's check it out, and I'm gonna see if I can grab a couple of these things. But the very first thing that I see is this like wooden thing on the ground. This is actually pretty cool. This would have been from the mid to late 1800s. This would have been used to blow high pressured air into cracks and crevices to get dust and dirt out of places that weren't so easily accessible. These things are pretty valuable. They actually go for well over $100, and this guy only wanted 40 bucks for this, so I wanted to get it just because I think it's really cool. And so I did. I think it's kind of cool. It doesn't really work the way that it should, but this thing is supposed to come out and then you like, Ugh! it's got the patent number. There's like a little eagle somewhere in there, but doesn't this seem like kind of a fussy way to like clean things? You didn't want to touch it. So you had this air gun that you would shoot into places. One of the other things that Victorian people just did that was very fussy and very over the top and just like 
kind of unnecessary were umbrellas. Just your basic everyday things were a little bit elevated. And so when you look at old Victorian umbrellas, those things can be really valuable. And it's not even just the umbrella because a lot of those things definitely did not survive. But the handles on some of these umbrellas and these old walking sticks can be really, really collectible and really valuable. Things that are made out of sterling silver or mother of pearl. So this guy has one of these really incredible umbrella handles that has amazing detailing on it. If you can find a really elaborate, really over the top umbrella handle or walking stick handle, these things can go for a hundred to two hundred dollars just for the handle. You don't even need the rest of the walking stick or the umbrella because this this, you guys, this is quality. And he only wanted $30 for it, so I was more than happy to pay that for something like this. The handle is all mother of pearl, and then it's got this really incredible metal detailing on it. But this is really, really high quality, you guys. Like, I can't tell you how many umbrellas I've just like, left at the gas station or just thrown on the ground. I feel like an umbrella for me lasts about three weeks. That's about the life of an umbrella in my life. If you had something like this that was like completely handmade with like mother of pearl and gold and I have like the fanciest umbrella on the block, your life expectancy for an umbrella would have to be way more than two weeks to want to have something like this. But this is actually something that I kind of wish we still did. Really high quality everyday items. No, nope, not anymore. Now you just buy them at the gas station for like $11.50. Yes, it was fussy, but they also just had some really good quality stuff. For the Victorian women that did take several hours to get ready in the morning, I feel like this probably contributed to it. And if you are a woman who likes to wear lipstick, something like this might totally help you take three hours to get ready in the morning because this is a lipstick music box and I ended up finding this for $40. These things are really, really collectible and they make them out of pottery and porcelain. Some of them are made out of marble and they have really incredible detailing to them. It's a music box that holds all of your lipstick. You have a very short window of time to choose the lipstick that you want before it closes again. You have to find your lipstick before the song is over. And that to me would just be anxiety inducing. Okay, and so now you better start looking at your options. You better pick, you better pick. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And you know what? If you didn't find the one you wanted, now you have to listen to that whole song again. And the ones that are gonna be a little bit more valuable are gonna be the ones that are Italian. And you know when you see them, they're definitely a little bit more elaborate and a little bit more over the top. So this next thing that I found is also really incredible. This is actually an old miner's safety helmet. And this is pretty cool because MSA is a company that has specialized in safety equipment from the early 1900s all the way until today. They're still making some really amazing stuff and they've really adapted to all of the different situations that have arisen in the world. In the 1930s, they started making really amazing fire helmets. And then in the 1940s, they started making helmets for the US military. Back in the day, mining was like a huge thing. Everybody was like working in mining towns. There was gold mining and oil mining and all kinds of different mining, but the only way to get light in these mines were to use lanterns that had flames. And so mine explosions were a really, really big problem way back in the day. So what MSA actually created was a flameless miner's lamp, which was really revolutionary and it cut back on these mining explosions by like 75%. You would have the helmet, and then on the front here was a little light that would go on the front so you could actually see what it was that you were looking at. It's just like those old miner helmets that you see in the cartoons. This particular one actually looks like somebody painted on. It would have originally been this color here on the bottom. Is this pattern here is what they call tiger stripes. And it's actually a really, really valuable pattern. These things can go for several hundred dollars in this tiger stripe design. And it's a little bit disappointing that somebody decided to paint all over this. It's got the MSA mark on the front. And I was definitely excited. They only wanted $20 for this, which is a great deal for one of these old miners helmets. Now, one thing that has remained consistent since I've been around anyway, is the desire to have smaller phones, right? Like I feel like cell phones came out, they were these massive bricks that you had to hold on the side of your head using two hands. And since then, it's just been this like process to slowly make them smaller and more compact so they'd fit in your pocket. But this also 
was a thing for wall phones back in the day. In fact, Bell Electric created a wall rotary phone that was a space saver version of the rotary wall phone. And these can actually go for a lot of money if you can find them in really good condition. Um, I went to an estate sale, you guys, and I found a space saver wall rotary phone, new old stock, still in the original box. This is incredible, you guys. They didn't even ever use this thing. It's so cool. So like, here's the box. And then here's the phone. This phone is also nicknamed the lollipop phone because it's shaped like a lollipop. But basically, this is it. And it's so much smaller than the standard rotary wall phone was at the time. So I don't know why you needed to save space on your wall. Maybe you wanted to like hang up extra family pictures on each side, but this is definitely smaller and it definitely would have saved space. I'm expecting to probably be able to sell that for well over hundred dollars in that type of condition in the original box like that. And the next thing I'm gonna show you guys is also from the 1960s. This guy just has it sitting on the ground here. He's asking hundred dollars for it, which seems like a lot, but one like this in this good of condition with everything included will sell for 400 to $500. So in today's world, you don't have to know how to use one of these. If you are going to sail a ship or a boat off into the sunset, you can probably just purchase some kind of GPS device or some other crazy high-tech device that'll tell you exactly where you are anywhere in the world. But back in the day, one of these had to be used to tell exactly where you were. And it's actually very accurate. In fact, a lot of sailors still know how to use these. It has all of the original stuff. It's got a certificate of an examination, but it has all of like the eyepieces that come with it. And I think that's like another eyepiece. Does anybody know how to actually use one of those things? I would love to know if any of you guys actually know how to use those because I am two seconds away from throwing myself in the first blow up raft that I can find from like CVS, learning how to use that thing and just like finding myself on some island somewhere. I have not been on a vacation and I can't even tell you how long. So leave me a comment. Let me know if you actually know how to use those and let me know how difficult it actually is. And for the rest of you that don't know how to use sextants, out of all of the items that I showed you guys today, what is something that you still wish that we were using till this very day? And what is something that you are glad to see go? I feel like the umbrella handle, <laughs> I just want a fancy umbrella handle. I feel like that's something that I would definitely still want till this very day. And the thing that I'm glad to see go is the wooden air blower. Like, who wants to walk around their house blowing air out of cracks with a piece of wood? Like, that's crazy. Leave your comment in the comment section below. I'm super excited to read your responses. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, make sure you do it now so you don't miss future episodes. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.